Hey guys, Happy Gamma here, and uh, we're back today in the Bill 7. Um, but we are at a new airport that I haven't showed you guys yet. This is uh, Echo Delta X Ray Echo. There's a small grass airstrip in Germany that uh, it's a freeway airport, and it's uh, it's pretty cool. It's uh, a nice airport for just doing some general aviation stuff. It's got some nice 3D volumetric grass, some cool buildings, and uh, just a cool kind of vibe. Um, Today we're going to be talking a little bit about some uh, energy management theory. Uh, but before we get into that, I'll just fill you guys out a bit. Um, today I'm heading off to Canada. Actually, by the time you see this video, I'm most likely going to be sat on a plane. Um, so that means there won't be any videos for the next uh, next 14 days or so, so two weeks. Um, that being said, though, when I come back, I'm definitely going to do a video because uh, when I'm in Canada... I'm going to be doing a helicopter flight with the company BC Helicopters. The guy who runs that, or one of the guys that runs that, uh, he has a YouTube channel called Pilot Yellow, where he shows what he does as an uh, instructor there. And I'm going to be uh, flying an hour check, ride, or check flight with, uh, with him in the Cabri G2. And that'll be the first time where I'm actually you know, in the controls of a real-life helicopter. So that should be a lot of fun, and uh, I'll most likely do a video uh, talking a little bit about that, depending on how much... Um, we get done. Now, to what we're going to do today. Play, uh, um, energy management theory. Now, this is mostly um, about um, engine out scenarios, so where you're going to be uh, doing auto rotations. I'll just get going here, we'll head down to the runway. Um, and the reason I think this is uh, quite important to talk about is um, when you learn to do auto rotations, or when you see other people uh, demonstrate how an auto rotation works. It's often a very simple version of the auto rotation, which works, you know, really well if you have the airport right in front of you, or if you have the airport, you know, 180 degrees left or right. Um, that's typically the the autos that you see, um, and and they're quite good. And that's kind of what you 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 know that's going to get you a lot of, of stuff done but if you are flying in an area where you don't have a lot of spaces to put it down in case of an engine failure it is good to understand how energy in case of an engine out works um, and a little bit about that it's uh, it's kind of mainly focusing about um, the three parameters that you can kind of change um, that is being airspeed altitude and rotor RPM um, and and that's gonna uh, kind of dictate how um, you can fly the helicopter when when you're doing this. Now you bleed off, you know, if, if all of those were, were static, or you could, uh, that, that's how you um, you need you need one of them powered, which is what you do with the engine normally, uh, powering the rotor RPM, which means that you can fly around. But when you when you lose that engine, you have to balance out those three parameters. Now, what you what you usually learn is, you know, set up an auto rotation where you have rotor RPM in the bottom of the green, and you have airspeed at 60 to 70 knots. Now that works really well, but in reality, that's just the parameters that need to be set when you enter the flare. Anything upon, you know, until you enter the flare, you can move around with the parameters as much as you want. And when you understand that, that's when you can really, kind of. Um, pick your spots and really understand the the maneuverability and the possibilities even without an engine driving your rotors. Um, now the, the simple bits of that is um, when your engine goes out if you um, pitch the helicopter up so the nose goes up you're gonna lose, al uh, lose airspeed you're gonna gain altitude and you're gonna gain rotor RPM right when you then pitch the helicopter down, you're going to gain airspeed, but you're going to lose altitude faster. Um, and then there's a third kind of thing that, that um, is a bit weird that you have to get used to, uh, which you learn in the 180 degree autos, and that is uh, your rotor RPM is going to spike, it's going to increase if you enter a turn. Now we can quickly demonstrate that, we're at, at uh, 1,500 feet above uh, the sea level, which is about 1,500 feet above this ground too, um, and if we just uh, roll the throttle off and lower, lower the collective, if you keep an eye on the rotor RPMs, 
right now they're center of the green. If I start a turn, you can see they spike up, and now I had to add collective, had to add collective to not overpower or over um, rotate the the rotors. I right, throttles back in and we can raise the collective up with uh, 800 feet to spare. Sweet. Um, so one of the best examples of this that I can kind of come up with uh, is from a video I saw of a uh, instructor instructing a real life uh, student pilot um, on on these auto rotations, and he explained that if you're going, up, you know, at a thousand feet. If you're, you know, good at this, going at at 500 feet, if you lose your engine, you can pitch back, lower the collective, but not too much, because in that, you know, remember in that pitch up, because it's a, it's loading the the rotor blades with positive G's, you're going to gain rotor RPM. So you can, you can keep quite a lot of collective in, and you can pitch the nose up, um, and that way you can gain altitude. You're going to lose the airspeed. If you then do a 180 degree turn when you're at zero airspeed, you can then trade your altitude to airspeed again, and that way you can hit a um, you know a field or a landing spot behind you that you might not have been able to get to if you just did a standard 180 degree auto. So I thought we can uh, we can clearly demonstrate that I'm going to do it a thousand feet. I haven't done this much. I haven't actually tried it in the Bill 407, so I don't know how this is going to go. Um, but it's a really good example of how you can manipulate the three parameters that you have control over in order to, you know, get the helicopter to do what you need it to do. So coming up on 900 feet here and uh, cruising around, because when you're in cruise, uh, uh, cruise altitude and you're in cruise flight, you've got, you know, quite a good uh, amount of speed. Um, in the Bell 407, the cruise flight is about 110, 120 knots which is obviously, you know, quite a good amount of speed, you can gain a lot of altitude from that. Alright, so we're just coming around, let's uh, get out on the airport here, we are at uh, 1,200 feet, so I'll uh, get us down a little bit more. Don't want to be too high, that kind of defeats the purpose. Now we're going to overfly the airport, and as we kind of hit the threshold uh, on the other end uh, of the runway, uh, we're going to cut the engine out, and I'm going to pitch the helicopter up, keeping a little bit of collective in. Uh, we're going about 100 knots now. Should be pretty good. 100 knots, 900 feet. Should be able to demonstrate it quite nicely. So, as we can see below us, she's coming over the threshold about now. So we're going to get the throttle out, and pitch up, which is going to gain us altitude. Rotor RPM is in the bottom of the green. See, so we gain a bit of altitude, and then we're going to do a pedal turn, coming back the other way, pitching down, regaining airspeed, losing that altitude, rotor RPM to the bottom of the green, 70 knots, roll it out, rotor RPM is bottom of the green, 300 feet, 60 knots, in the flare, throttle comes in, kind of that torque, has a little bit of a sketchy... Uh, a little bit of a sketchy uh, getting the throttle in, but that basically that demonstrates it quite nicely how you can manipulate the three parameters to get the helicopter to go wherever you need, and that's kind of what you need to understand. It is important, crucial that you have the parameters, you know, where they need to be when you get to the flare portion of the auto rotation, but anywhere you know up until the flare. You can have rotor RPM, airspeed, and altitude wherever you need it to have to get you where you need it to be. Let's just put it down here next to these uh, this crowd. All right. Well, I think that's uh, about what I wanted to talk about today. Um, keep in mind, this is, of course, uh, I'm not a real-life pilot, uh, but this is the stuff that. Um, you you will see a lot of instructors talk about in uh, real life videos videos if you see student pilots um, doing their training. All right. Well, I mean, thank you guys very much for watching. Uh, hope you enjoyed. And hope you you learned something off it, or at least uh, got your thoughts going. And uh, of course, go out there and uh, experiment, test with your with your helicopter, see what the parameters are, see what you can do, and uh, that's about it. Also, if you guys have any uh, any suggestions for any future videos, please let me know. 
Um, I'm always open to suggestions. Um, I think I've got a video lined up where I'm going to be talking a little bit about sloped landings. Um, and we're doing that with the Bill 407 too because uh, it, it, uh, the Bill 407 with the SCID plugin it uh, really allows for some realistic sloped landings. Alright, well, as I said, if you guys enjoyed that, um, leave a like on the video, leave your suggestions in the, in the comment section below, and until the next video guys, take care.